everybody, and thanks for stopping by. This is the first in a series of videos related to building Eddie Van Halen related guitars. Now this first series is Frankie with a Tom Anderson neck on it. And if you can deal with the less than professional audio, I think you'll still get a lot of good info on this guitar, on its creation, its history. And we'll go through some of the myths and speculation and everything else that is Eddie Van Halen guitars. And if you have a guitar that you want to see built, hit me up. Contact me below, leave a message, do something, and I'll get it on the list. The next series after this one is a full 5150 full relic that turned out excellent. But for right now, enjoy this series on Frankie, and you'll see what it takes to build one accurately and to pull it off the best that we can. Thank you for stopping by. All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off. Just as an update, bring you back to where we are right now. This is a Chris Lock custom body. This is the Northern Ash Frankie. Uh, he also does a version with, uh, let's say, the pre-79 version, or 79 earlier, which has just the Fender tremolo screws. So if you're doing a version from 1979 or later, meaning 1980, 81, 82, you want to ask for the Floyd posts to be included. Okay? So that's part of it. Um, this is his new version as of, I believe, May of 2019, or even... Um, April possibly where it's a little more worn it's a it's a little thinner up along here a little more severe uh, due to the natural process of refinements and uh, having better references to work by and everything else so he's done a really fine job um, I haven't seen an, another Frankie body that 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 nails it like this. Um, I guess if you wanted to buy an actual 1976 Boogie Bodies uh, Strat, and you can you could actually find one, um, that might be the only way to be more accurate. We're going to deal with uh, Northern Ash, which is what the original Frankie is made out of. And what we can see is that, from what we know from all the reference photos and everything else, Eddie's body was sealed. It wasn't perfectly sealed. There was still a lot of, um, I would say, green channels that were showing. Certain pictures in the right kind of light show the reflection of some grain right up here looking similar to, to this intensity of grain, but right along here. And there's pictures on these inner bouts here that show the green on the original. And, of course, there's some spots all along here that show it as well. So we know that Eddie got the body as a kind of a throwaway. Uh, didn't, didn't make it to the assembly line because it wasn't as, as good as the others. Uh, also, there's also a theory, if you look right here on this spot here, on this inner bout there, that there was a large wood knot about right there. And that may have also contributed to them only partially sealing the body and saying, we're not going to get around this, this knot or hide it very well. And that made it uh, eligible for the seconds pile. Uh, there's a lot of documentation showing this exact spot, uh, which looks like just simply natural relic wear with paint being stripped, but it's not. Uh, certain photos actually show uh, the sunken-in nature of the wood right there. And it's one way to document the Frankie, and if you want to go into Frankie's entire life, um, that's something you always want to look for, is that wood knot that's right there. Okay? 
So we're not going to use uh, the same sealer, sealer, and, and, and everything that they used in 1976, which I believe was the Fenderplast, which is a uh, sealer that basically it's a very standard polyurethane sealer, but Fender used it and slapped their own name on it. And it is hard as a rock. Absolutely hard as a rock. And because we're not doing 50 of these a day, it just makes sense to use something different. What I use is Zepoxy. Zepoxy finishing resin. It's a two-part system. As you can see, this is very red. It used to be much more of a golden color. And they reformulated this in 2000. 17 I believe which is disappointing because a lot of acoustic guitar builders use this as their finishing layer as well it's uh, it's a fantastic sealer and it becomes very hard but you can also give it a, a glass mirror finish it holds up really well and takes that kind of a finish so the epoxy um, while very stiff is very workable so you mix this up one to one and what I do is I, I initially start off with uh, the areas that have the softer grain which is the darker colors these darker colors due to sanding the, the body after it's been CNC'd or template cut or anything else people to you know they, they sand this down they smooth it out and because the dark wood is softer than the white wood uh, that slight bit of pressure uh, in sanding makes these areas go down just a hair bit more so it's very noticeable um, and just by feeling it you can feel that the the dark areas really sink down in now, if I were to not seal this and just simply paint, you know, spray paint it, it would it would look bad. It, it would be tons and tons of uh, valleys and peaks, and you'd see, you know, you you'd be focused more on these grain patterns than than the paint job that goes on top of it. So, to mimic what Eddie had, we are going to fill the valleys smooth it out so that it gets a flat surface and we're going to do this probably I've got it down to about two times now sometimes it takes three depending on how severe the difference in height is between the hard and the soft grain so and th this yellow is the tint that I use this is a Stumac amber dye and I basically mix it um, a few drops with about an ounce of water and then I take a brush and I paint it on now the fact I mean the moment any water touches this body the individual grain will stand up like hair so you really need to get this sanded. What helps is to dampen the surface so that all those hairs stand up, sand it, knock all those down, or use a razor, scrape at a 45 degree angle, scrape the hairs off. And if you do that twice, you should be able to predict that when you go to apply the dye, you're not going to have a lot of those hairs all of a sudden stick, stick up. I call them hairs, but it's grain. Okay? So, before you ever do anything, prep the wood by getting rid of all those little potential hairs that are going to stand up, because they'll stick right up through the finish. Or actually, it'll stick right up through the epoxy. And we don't want to do that. So, do your best at prepping. Just like if you were doing a very, very fine vintage car, it's all down in the prepping. The actual painting and detail work is is probably the least amount of work. 
and to get a really fantastic finish all the prep work has to be done correctly and it is very it's time consuming I'll, I'll I'll tell you that so this has been done this is ready to go uh, I've gone ahead and I've done the dye which is their vintage amber uh, mixed I use just water but that's because I've already prepped it and I know that more water hitting the grain isn't going to make it stand up so this has been dried entirely uh, for at least I would wait 24 hours but this has been done for a few days and you can see the difference it's not a strong strong dye finish so there's nothing here and then here's the dye okay and what we're counting on is that when we hit it with the epoxy it's going to give it even a slight more amber look to it like that so when you have little areas like right here and right here where that that is showing through under all the paint after the relicking it's going to have the right amber tone if you had just the raw white wood it would look very off so that's that's what we're doing so what I did first is you mix up the epoxy one by one equal portions I use a matchstick a wooden one and I put a little drop in each one of these little dark grained areas a few drops in the bigger ones like this and then I start taking my card and I start filling it in into that grain I'm not worried right now about stealing the whole body so I want to get that first coat down into those that deeper area and fill in that area as much as possible keep it clean don't let it run sometimes I let this epoxy set up for five minutes after I mix it and before I put it on to the body it's it's very water like when it first starts almost like a uh, warm maple syrup and it's hard to control it'll start setting up as soon as you mix but you have got a good 30 minute work time so you could let it sit for five minutes it'll thicken up slightly and then put your drops here kind of fill in the grain as much as you can let it dry it, it takes I find it takes about 12 hours to get hard to the point where you can actually start to work it start to scrape it so right after that's done try to do your absolute best to make sure you don't have any super high points because if you come in and try to smooth down those high points you're going to scrape off that layer of wood with the dye in it and now you're back down to that raw white look you don't want that so I did a little bit right here but I know that there's no exposed wood right there under the paint um, in the final version of Frankie so by, by doing a little too much you can see where I took I took that right off and it happens in a couple places if you do that don't worry about it. it's okay you don't have to remove it and start all over so one coat is done then I come back I mix up a second batch 12 hours later and that's when I'm going to cover the entire body and I'm still going to apply it everywhere I can everywhere I need to but in a little heavier amounts then I come in with the card and I really start to work it to smooth it over everything make sure you get everything into all these little spots okay and you're gonna have a lot of excess that accumulates on the edge of your card make sure that you have something there um, I would not use a paper towel but maybe you have a piece of cardboard and you can wipe off that excess just just wipe it right off go back start doing some more and make sure you get everything because remember this whole body was sealed the only part that wasn't sealed was inside the routes and especially the parts where Eddie took a router or a chisel to see so and and the paint there sets up very well there's there's really no paint removed in any of these cavities at all 
So those are going to be fine no matter what. So what we want to do is really get that second layer on there nice and smooth and covering everything. Now that layer might only be a 32nd of an inch thick, if that, but it does give you the opportunity to come in lightly with the razor and start to smooth down. And you'll see, you'll get these shavings. You can see that. But those thin little shavings, that's the epoxy. It's taking it from the high points and not the low points. So eventually over time, as you work on it, and odds are you're going to do at least three coats in the beginning, you're going to do this. Always try to have a fresh razor. And I add tape to mine so I could hold on to it easier. But that is a brand new fresh razor. I pull it out of the pack. I take acetone on a paper towel. Wipe off the entire razor because just like any tool, it has machine oil on it. Which just keeps it from rusting. So clean that off. Put the tape on it so you can easily handle it. And try and do everything at a 45 degree angle with some tension on it. And there are times when it's better to push away from you than pull. And it really depends on where you are. Let me, fi let me find a spot here. I'll We're pretty smooth in here. And smooth continuous strokes. And that's good. Now when you go to do the razor, I use a razor almost for everything. Um, even after relicking, after I take the tape off, after I do everything else, I still use the razor to knock down all that, the bumps on the paint. And I'll show you that later. But it, it has to be done with a very, very fresh razor. Um, if you used a razor for relicking or dug into that wood or really scraped hard to expose the wood, don't ever use that razor again for this process. Okay? So, the other kind of important part is after, you're, after you, you've done that first layer and you're coming back and doing that second layer, your epoxy is going to set up. It might take you 10 or 15 minutes to really smooth this in and get it where you need it to be. While you're doing that, the epoxy is setting up and it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. Well, when it gets to a certain point where I'm pretty confident that it's not going to run, I get my finger, and I, I always use a rubber or a latex glove, and that's when I start filling in with my finger. I get a, get, a, get a gob of the epoxy and start rubbing it into these roundovers. And start doing that all the way around. Get it thick. And really rub it in. By the time you're done, it's going to be very, very thick. And your last little bits, are you're going to really have to push to work it in there. And that's good because you don't want to come back the next day and have runs that run down, which I've had happen a ton of times. Uh, but you'll, you'll have these runs come down and a big glob will, will harden right here. You don't want to do that. So you can see the last time I did this, I really covered a lot of the sides inside and this this is just one coat my plan is that after the top is done I go to the back I will then as I'm working here I'll add a second coat but I'll do it from this side and while your finger is not as smooth as this card um, it does a good job because the epoxy is thick and it will retain a thickness to it that if you were to use a card, it would not. You know, when you do that with a card, it basically exposes the high points or the white wood. And the epoxy will stay only in the dark areas. But I really want to coat it with my finger. I want to really make that, you know, like some thick icing. And it's a, it's a, it's a hard wood, giggity that you're working with. So you're going to have the highs and the lows because of this grain. So it's basically a 
really hard wood and just a hard wood. And the difference between the two when sanding uh, makes that happen, where you're going to have a little bit higher and a little bit lower. Okay? That's what we're looking out for, is to make sure that everything is coated. When this is ready for paint, you do not want any wood exposed whatsoever. It all needs to be under the seal. Now, the only times that's not true is when we're talking about the cavities for the electronics and for your tremolo route.